After two years of studying, on January 23rd of 1849, she graduated at the top of her class. The day of the graduation, they had to be there a little earlier than everyone else and they were to walk in and sit in the front. Instead of following those directions, she walked in a little later than the rest of the other graduates and sat in the back. Once they had called her name to present her as the top of the class, she walked from the back, received her diploma, said a few words, and then proceeded back to her seat. When she was 11 years old, her family moved from New York to Cincinnati, Ohio. A couple of years later, her father passed away, meaning that she would have to help her family earn money by getting a job teaching. A little time after that, one of her family friends that was a female was dying of uterine cancer. While on her deathbed, she told Elizabeth that she would have had gotten treatment, but she was uncomfortable with male physicians and that she would have preferred a female physician instead. After her friend's death, she then proceeded to fulfill her dream by pursuing a career in medicine. After making that decision, she then moved to North Carolina by herself for the first time and resided with the family, and from there, she got taught privately. At first, she was taught by John Dixon in Asheville, North Carolina in around 1845. Later on, during 1847, she moved with Samuel Dixon, John's brother, and got taught there as well. After being taught with Samuel, she started to apply to different colleges with his help. In May of 1847, after being rejected by several different colleges, she had finally been accepted by Geneva Medical College, later on to be known as Hobart and William Smith Colleges. She had only been accepted by Geneva because the faculty had given the colleagues a ballot where they got to vote if she was able to be accepted into that college. Since they thought that it was a joke, all of the colleagues voted that she would be accepted. People thought that they either voted that she was allowed to attend because they didn't have enough students at the time and they wanted to be known around more, or because they thought that it was funny for a female to be at the school. In November of that same year, she was able to start classes at Geneva Medical College. Throughout the time that she spent there, at the beginning, she wasn't able to attend the lectures or the labs. She later wrote a letter to the faculty stating that she wanted to be able to view and listen to them. The faculty read it and gave her permission to attend them. That helped her understand more so she was able to pass the classes that she needed. After two years of studying, on January 23rd of 1849, she graduated at the top of her class. The day of the graduation, they had to be there a little earlier than everyone else and they were to walk in and sit in the front. Instead of following those directions, she walked in a little later than the rest of the other graduates and sat in the back. Once they had called her name to present her as the top of the class, she walked from the back, received her diploma, said a few words, and then proceeded back to her seat. Two years after graduating on March 4, 1851, Elizabeth wrote a letter to Baroness Anne Isabella Milbank Byron about female physicians regarding their education. She discussed that women physicians deserve the same education as males. She also discussed that they shouldn't be treated unfairly because they were women.
A time after she graduated from Geneva and sent the Baroness a letter, she took a trip and moved to Paris, France. When she moved, she had been forced to enroll and practice being a midwife at La Martinite. During the time that she was there, she had been wanting to be a surgeon. She had performed surgery, more so just on babies. During one of the surgeries on a baby, she had contracted a disease called purulent ophthalmia. After contracting it, her left eye went blind and left her without being able to become a surgeon. After completing her practice at La Mercenite in 1853, she moved back to New York and opened her own practice on the poverty-stricken side. The practice was called the New York Infirmary for Women and Children. Later on that year, her sister Emily, in which had followed in her footsteps, and Marie E. Sashevskra, had helped her service patients. About four years later, in 1857, Elizabeth was able to expand the clinic to a hospital called the New York Infirmary for Indigenous Women and Children. On January of 1859, Elizabeth Blackwell became the second woman on the medical register of the UK General Medical Council. After getting her name on the medical register, she returned to the United States to help in the war. She helped to form the Women's Central Relief Association in New York City during the Civil War. It was later established as the U.S. Sanitary Commission in 1861. In the association, she aided the Union Army with food, clothing, and medical supply and service to the soldiers that were injured. In the late 1860s, she expanded the New York Infirmary for Indigent Women and Children and opened the Women's Medical College of the New York Infirmary. The women that attended the college got to learn about hygiene and how to prevent and treat diseases. It also helped women get an education that they may not have gotten in other medical colleges if they didn't get accepted. After dedicating her life to giving women a chance to learn more and getting the same opportunities as men, on May 31st, 1910, she had passed away at the age of 89 in Hastings, Sussex, England. With the help of many different people like Florence Nightingale, Marie Sashescra, her sister Emily, her college professors, her colleagues, her friend and family, she was able to help women get an education and pursue a career that they wanted to do with their help.